Hi there class, Professor Steve here and uh, this particular lecture is going to be uh, on the basically on the water molecule so for um, especially for, for certain parts of the course especially when we get to, to some of the physical parts uh, some of the physical science you, you we definitely need to have a basic understanding of 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 the water molecule because uh, it plays a key role in 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 um, in the properties of water which are unique and and even more so uh, when we when we talk about seawater and and how seawater behaves so so here we go so why is water unique essentially water uh, hopefully most of us know is made up from one oxygen molecule and two hydrogen molecules it's in, it takes this this angular shape and uh, the, the molecular formula is h2o so uh, what makes water so special, so unique, um, and even gives it its shape? Uh, we call that uh, uh, stereochemistry. Um, is essentially the, the the types of bonds that that form the molecule itself. So we have our our, our large oxygen molecule, and our two hydrogen molecules, and they connect together with what's called a covalent bond. What happens is the hydrogens together form um, collectively a positive end and the oxygen forms a negative end which sort of push away from each other and that's why they are angled this way away the, the two hydrogens are angled away from um, the negative end uh, of the oxygen and when you have a negative and a positive sort of end to it to any molecule you call that a polar molecule it has dipoles two different poles a positive and a negative <clears throat> so that's what gives it, it that's what gives it its structure and its shape and um it is that fact that allows it to have an hydrogen bond um between other water molecules so we have one water molecule two water molecules um the hydrogen end a hydrogen from one hydrogen from one water molecule attaches to because it's positive connects to the negative oxygen of another molecule and and that's how they start to string together to form um, you know liquid water or gaseous water or, or whatever but it's these particular bonds in the water molecule and then this hydrogen bond the covalent bonds here the hydrogen bond here um, that begin to give water um, its unique properties and we'll start to go into why now um, first of all cohesion and adhesion um, are uh, the, the particular cohesion and adhesive pro properties of water are consequences of those bonds. Um, so co cohesion is a me is a measure of of, an, of a, a molecule's tendency to stick to itself, um, and and most compounds do this. Otherwise, they wouldn't they wouldn't form larger versions of themselves, such as puddles or solids. Um, water has a has a pretty strong cohesion; it wants to stick to itself. But all, water also has a strong adhesive property, which means it has a tendency to stick to other things. You see this with a water droplet. If you take it and you stick it in your hand, the water doesn't disperse and become a bunch of tiny little water molecules. You can still see it, but it doesn't run quite so easily um, off of your hand either. You have you have you, you can form a little bubble of water there. Or you can see this in the meniscus, or or the overfilling of of um, uh, of a container of water, especially if you're using like something smaller, like a graduated cylinder. Uh, the other consequence of its bonds is it's the only substance on Earth that naturally occurs in all three states: a solid, liquid, and gas. And essentially, m all other substances we have to either put under artificial we have to put under an artificial environmental um, um, circumstances to make it exist as one of these states. It usually exists as one naturally, and then we have to make an artificial environment, like put it under pressure or super cool it to make it exist in, in other states. But water does this naturally on our Earth according to our natural range of temperatures um, all on its own. Uh, the other consequence um, of, of the water molecule's structure and bonding is it has a very high heat capacity. So what is heat capacity? Heat capacity means the ability of a substance to absorb heat. So we measure that in, we call that specific heat as well, um, and we measure that in energy units or calories or whatever energy, energy unit you want to measure per gram of that substance to change it one degree Celsius. So how much energy, how much heat does it take to change the temperature um, of 
how much energy does it take to take the temperature, change the temperature of one gram of that substance, one degree Celsius? And you see water is one. So it takes one unit of energy, whatever the measurement is, one calorie of energy to, measure, to raise one gram of that substance, one degree Celsius. And you see that liquid water has the highest. Um, uh, solid water, which is ice, obviously, is, is quite a bit lower. Gaseous water has, has a even lower. Um, and you see how these things stack up, though, compared to everything else. Um, so liquid water is quite quite a bit higher than than many other liquids or solvents or even some solids um, around us. So what that means is that the temperature of water has the potential to impact very strongly what's around it and not vice versa. And that's why if you live near a lake or the ocean, uh, the temperature in the air or the land is strongly affected by the temperature of that of that of that large body of water. <clears throat> so it's at this point we're gonna, we're going to do an introduction, a quick lesson on density before we can go any further with the water molecule. Um, in general, whoops, sorry about that. I was missing a missing a molecule. In general, any substance um, density depends on the temperature of that substance. So if a substance, let's say this was air molecules or wood molecules or metal molecules, it could be any molecule. When it's colder, uh, the, there's always an energy in the bonds connecting one molecule of wood or air or whatever the material is, one molecule to the other. So you can think of these bonds as constantly vibrating, like this little arrow in here. Uh, so whenever it's colder, these bonds are, they shrink down, they depicted here by a smaller arrow, and the energy between them is slower, depicted by sort of this slower movement. When you heat up that substance, the, uh, the energy in those bonds becomes greater Yet the distance between the molecules becomes larger and the energy and vibration between those two becomes greater. Okay, So this is the difference between being more dense, right? So if you cool something and the energy shrinks between in the, in the bond between one molecule and another, they come closer together and we call that more dense. When you heat them up, they get further apart and the energy is greater, we call that less dense. And the reason, the, the way we really measure density um, is usually in some unit volume. So if we're talking about air or a unit, you know, a square foot of wood or metal or whatever the substance might be, we look inside that unit. How many of these molecules can we fit inside that unit? That's the density, right? So if we take this state right here and this unit, we could call this a cubic, um, a cubic we could call this a liter of water, we could call this a liter um, of air, we could call it a cubic foot of wood or metal, it doesn't matter. But with this vibrational energy at this temperature, we can fit this many of the molecules, right? So 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, <coughs> which is 12 of those molecules. So the density at this temperature of this molecule is 12 of those molecules per square foot, or whatever the unit volume is. So as we make that molecule, uh, that substance hotter, we add heat, the energy becomes greater, the distance between the molecules becomes greater, and you can fit less of those molecules in there. So that it becomes less dense because we can fit less of the molecule inside this unit box. If we make it colder, the energy gets even smaller and slower, and we can fit many, many more of them inside this unit box. Okay, so then we make it more dense. More dense because we can fit more of the molecule inside this box. And this is actually very well organized. Most substances will jam together in an irregular pattern um, to form what we call a solid. I, I would say that we could call these states, you know, the, at its very coldest and most dense, a, a, a substance is a solid. Um, at sort of a mediocre state, it's usually a, a liquid. And at the very high energy states, it's usually a gas. Uh, but they usually pack in here to form a solid quite um, in not so uniform a, ma a matter. They usually are jammed in and at irregular angles to each other kind of thing. <coughs> so the point at which they change um, uh, um, states between uh, solid and liquid and gas and also this, uh, some other properties, such as how well they osmose or transfer from one place to the other due to, due to density across barriers, um, these are what we call um, the colligative properties of, 
of a substance. And another consequence of the bonds of water and its, and its molecular structure is that it has unique colligative properties. So we're going to look at um, basically these two for the most part, freezing and boiling point of water. So if we look at the water molecule in our little boxes in, a, in, 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 this, in the example of water rather than our just anonymous molecule like we just did, um, it is random. Um, it is much more, much more spaced out uh, when it is vaporized water, right? So here we've heated it to a point where it has become steam um, and become gaseous water. And it's floating around in the air, which water does all the time. Very random. As we cool it off, it becomes a little more ordered, right? It starts to come closer together. We can fit war more water molecules in the box. It becomes more dense, and it turns into a liquid, and it's a little more structured. The difference between water when it becomes a solid, so we cool it all the way down until it freezes and becomes ice, um, is it does form a very structured pattern. Okay, we call this a lattice network. We can see water, uh, hydrogen to, to oxygen, oxygen to hydrogen, hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen, to hydrogen to oxygen in this lattice pattern, and it repeats over and over and over again. So there is never a spot in here where water molecules can just be jam-packed at, at an irregular fashion. Um, so water that makes water essentially be one of the few substances that can that gets bigger when it freezes, so less dense, right? Is what I really should say. So um, very low density when it's a gas a higher density when it's a liquid and then slightly less dense than liquid is is ice and that's why ice floats because water when it freezes into a solid forms this very um, very strict uh, less dense pattern and that's very important um, so when we're talking about just fresh water here we'll talk about seawater in the, in the next capture um, we can follow the density of water um, and see how just how it goes with temperature. So up here at the highest temperature, which we which on this graph is 12 degrees Celsius, we see that the density over here, because density is going up in this direction, temperature is going up in this direction. Highest temperature, lowest density. We're speaking about a gas here. As you lower the temperature, the density gets higher and higher. As we lower the temperature, higher and higher and higher. Right? It's a liquid for all this time, and then once it starts to approach its freezing point, the, the, the water molecules lock into that lattice structure and become less and less dense again until it freezes at 0 degrees C um, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, becomes less dense than the, than the water, and, and the ice will float on water because of that. Its maximum density for fresh water is 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's a, a very important um, thing to note about water, especially once we move into seawater. Second thing is water as a solvent, which makes essentially it perfect for making seawater. What do I mean by a solvent? Solvent, any substance that dissolves another substance to form a solution. So, uh, you know, fancy chemical definition, not really, but but um, what, what you need to know about a solvent is you can put a substance into it and it dissociates or breaks up into its elements, it disintegrates. Um, it can also be defined as breaking something down into, into a small size. And water is unique because it is very powerful and sometimes called the universal solvent. It's nearly universal, but that means that you can dissolve almost anything into it. Um, so more specifically for this class, um, the reason it's so good is because of its polarity, right? The same reason that it has this structure and f within a mole it's in within molecular structure and can connect to another molecule, um, uh, which makes it polar molecule makes it a good, very good solvent. And we see that when we dissolve salt, just like NaCl, which is sodium chloride, is uh, table salt and is also one of the biggest ingredients. And what does water do? breaks the salt into a separate sodium positive ion, a separate chlorine um, negative ion, so that it is dissociated, making the water salty. Right? So here it is in mass, right? We have sodium uh, chlorine broken up, and this is how the water molecules uh, sort of attack this sodium uh, and associate themselves around the outside to make salt water. 
All right, so next lesson will be um, seawater in general. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.